Hello and welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast. We are a week from Thanksgiving. Uh, this is uh, Sam McEwen. I'm here with the heavy hitters, Tom Chattel and Dirk Chatwin. Uh, we, uh, we continue, we roll on uh, with, uh, with some of the, the stuff that's going on this week. We're going to talk about Nebraska football coaching search. We're going to talk about Nebraska-Wisconsin, um, why Nebraska has not beaten Wisconsin in 10 years, whether any of that matters. Uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit of men's basketball. They're playing later this evening against St. John's. Uh, I thought we'd talk a little volleyball, too, if we can get to it, um, and maybe a little Big Ten. Uh, we get to this point in the season, I'm always reflective on how um, uh, insufficient the West Division is to the East and how insufficient Nebraska is to its own peers. <laughs> so it's, like, doubly bad for Nebraska, but... Um, I just want to remember, uh, remind everybody to uh, subscribe to the Omaha World Herald. Uh, we know there's people listening to this who listen to it on Apple or Spotify or wherever uh, for free or YouTube uh, who may not be subscribers of the Omaha World Herald. And we want to let you know that you can. That yes, we still have an incredible deal. Six months, uh, a dollar. Um, if you start today, which is I think <coughs> November 17th, that's going to take you all the way, if my math is correct, um, all the way through May. Um, and that'll get you everything. That'll get you a spring game. That'll get you all the new coach stuff, both recruiting days. Uh, obviously, Nebraska men's basketball is going to uh, go to the Final Four. Um, the baseball team, that'll get you the first half of the baseball season. Actually, it might get you the whole thing, um, all the way to the regular season, maybe the first week of the, uh, the NCAA tournament for baseball. So you're going to get a lot, um, and you're going to get all the Creighton stuff too. And Creighton will go to the Final Four. Nebraska's not, but Creighton will. Um, so you'll get all that stuff too. So subscribe, www.omaha.com backslash subscribe, www.omaha.com backslash subscribe. Okay, the preamble is done. Gentlemen, we still don't have a coach for Nebraska. I don't think it's going to be Matt Rule. Um, we had this conversation last week. Um, where are we at? Because 10 days from now, we're going to probably know who the coach is. I don't know that the coach will be in, in formally – uh, in, in introduced, but I do think we'll know who the coach is. Where are we at with this? Well, we're, are we're, we ruling out Matt Rule? <laughs> Ruled out the rumor uh, with RH. Um, I, I think we're where we're, we were last week and the week before. We're we're, we're waiting until the end of the season, mm -hmm. and it's people want it to be now. And well, yeah, you hire him now because you can get a, a jump on recruiting and. Well, maybe that guy's staff who he hasn't hired yet is, is still has games, and they're not going to leave their jobs to come work for him. So let's just wait till the end of the year and not right. worry about hiring him right now. Um, I don't know. I, what, yeah, people have been – I mean, again, we, we've had too much time to, to, get, to, to get fired up about candidates, and then, and then okay, they, they've lost these games – uh, Kentucky lost to Vanderbilt. Mark Stoops is gone. Matt Campbell's been gone for a while. They, 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 they can certainly come back around and, and, and come back in. As, and they, they might be the guy who comes up behind the curtain. We don't know. But um, I like that. It's, it would be awesome if Trevor revealed him with a curtain. The curtain there he yeah. is. <laughs> Let's make a deal. A basuited. They should do it like they do the NBA lottery with, right. with, with ping pong balls. <laughs> That would be great. I think I, there. you know what? Uh, again, nobody's uh, nobody's had an extension. Nobody said no. Kleiman's apparently close. Okay, well then it, it won't be him. Um, but it's Gary Patterson said no. I think that's because he didn't. He wasn't going to get it. And he's that's yeah, why he he's not going to. He's not going to look bad. He's going to come out and say, "Well, I'm staying because I'm. I want to stay." But, I feel um, very confident that Gary Patterson, <clears throat> based on what I've heard in the last four or five days, was not a candidate for the job. Um. Not a candidate. I can see why Paul. I, I could see it uh, unless he gets. <laughs> there's some magic extension waiting, uh, but it'll be after the season. Um, after he loses to K State, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, so, but by the end of the season, we'll help. Somebody will be will be hired. So, I don't know, Sam. Let's. Um, Let's ask all our friends out there in uh, Rimmerland what's going on. You know what's, I, I, I never seem to know. What's yeah. funny to me is Nebraska tried to ex – I mean, schools try to execute this all the time in a matter of 48 hours, 72 hours, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes even less. And we've had, what, 70 days at this point almost? Yeah. And 
it's like, yeah, it takes time. You know, it's like how much time I realize, you know, there's, this is coming to an end at some point, but if they really don't know, that's a little bit concerning to me. Well, you kind of thought that they already had somebody in mind. I did. And I, I still, I think signs point in that direction. Uh, but there's been some, you know, there's been some, uh, I guess some, some false rumors. I don't know how else to put it, you know, some speculation that, um, that leads leads to thinking that that maybe it's not done yet. Um, you think they're still deciding? I don't, Tom. I don't. I haven't thought that for a few weeks. But <clears throat> I also don't know how these names just come out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like uh, it's you know, it's like a it's homecoming week, and there's spirit days. You know, it's like uh, wear the funny hat day. It's like Matt Rule day. You know, and then it's. Lance Leipold Day, and then it's Mickey Joseph Day, but, and uh, it just, it's a, a, as you said off the air, Tom, in conversation, the odd part about this is <clears throat> how little murmur there is nationally about this job. Like, there's just nothing. And locally, people can't stop talking about it, but nationally, who's even speculating, and there, Sam? I mean, who's who's even talking about it? Th- there would be, too. It, it, Nebraska's still a big enough name. For the the Bruce Feldmans and the mm-hmm. the, the well, Feldman the, had some speculation. The, the, the Rhett McMurphy's to come out and say Nebraska's got this. This is it, and and they they, they, they want to tell the world. Um, yeah, nobody's no, agents are not talking about this. Um, I mean, it's it's one thing for nobody around Nebraska to know, and they don't. I mean, this is this is an, an incredible uh, incredible feat that. Uh, that uh, 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 Trev Alberts is pulling off because mm-hmm. nobody knows anything. I've never seen anything like this because usually <laughs> it comes out uh, at some point during the thing. But it, 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 it was Matt Rule uh, day for about two or three weeks, though. People were, oh, he's it, it, it graduated to the point where it's going to be this weekend and now he's on campus. And so they, they, everybody kind of walked in on him for a while. Now it's kind of cooling off. No, the the cynical Mm -hmm. reaction to this is to say people are telling Trev no and he doesn't have his guy, uh, which would be concerning. Would. Um, I still think most likely he's got his guy and he's just been able to keep it quiet. Mm. So I'm going to – I'm still going to lean in that direction, but – I, I think he's known who he wanted since last season, the end of last season, when he gave Scott the extra. Okay, come on back. We'll try it again. Okay. I think he. Well, I, I mean, every AD has a list in there, if not on paper in their office, right? You know, somewhere in a safe where nobody, go, well, our guys can find it. Um, but it's in their head. Mm-hmm. So he, he's known who, who he's going to go after, and then he knew all summer. Okay, and then all when as soon as the onside kick happened, he started dialing that number, man. But, right. um, so what's interesting to me about that, Tom, is I, I think you're most likely right, but the byproduct of that is I think his selection might be someone who's not actually having that good of a season. Because ordinarily, if you were going to make a coaching change at the end of a year, somewhat spontaneously or um, on a whim, I guess, you would do it where – the the immediate reaction or the person that you would pursue would be someone who had a really good season who would be a hot name and i think you're right i think trev alberts most likely knew you know 365 days ago uh if he was going to have to make this decision who he was going to go after and therefore it might be matt campbell who's having a bad year it might be jeff monken who's not having that great of a year it might be uh you know it's a, it it, it might be someone point. who's not going to wow you at all, but someone <clears throat> who basically Albert's decided a year ago, this is my guy. That's a great point. You can't you can't get lost in the the, the moment if you're Trev or you're following this search. The, the 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 whole goal and point of this search is to build Nebraska football back. Well, if if you want to build a house, what do you do? You find somebody who's a uh, 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 a good builder, and you, and you hire him. Um, that's the job, starting uh, in two weeks. So Matt Campbell is a good builder. So, so is Mark Stoops. So is well, these guys that are that are having these bad years. 
still qualify because they're good builders. Now, they, they're, they're having a bad year. That happens in college football. Um, but <laughs> bottom line is they still qualify. So let me ask this question, and, and it's a two-part question, but one goes to strength and one goes to weaknesses of Nebraska. What would Nebraska have that coaches like Matt Campbell, Lance Leipold, and Mark Stoops, and Jeff Munkin don't currently have that would make, make their performance even better at Nebraska? And what does <coughs> Nebraska have that those four guys don't have to deal with at their current schools that would make this job harder than the ones that they're at now? Let's say those four guys are all candidates. They're all part of the final six, so to speak. What does Nebraska provide to Matt Campbell that takes Matt Campbell from being pretty good at Iowa State to really good at Nebraska? I or don't. Lance Leipold, or yeah, I, I actually I don't think it's a matter of national profile at this point. Um, I don't think Nebraska's name is going to carry a lot of weight uh, in terms of hey, we can get in the we can get in a living room with this guy right. where we couldn't if we were at our current school. Uh, however, I do think just the sheer amount of financial resources would be compelling to some of those guys. Uh, the ability can you do with more money? Well, the ability to, to, to spend $7 million assembling a staff instead of $4 million. Um, Mm -hmm. there's a little bit of, you know, ego involved in probably salary, uh, head coaching salary. Uh, I think the, you know, the, the NIL expenses is going to be compelling to some of those guys. I agree with that. Um, you know, I think I think the conference, from a standpoint of not so much the playoff, but just the uh, perception, I think is important that I'm in one of the two best conferences in college football. Yep. Not necessarily, again, not necessarily because it means oh, I can get in if I finish third, I can make the 12 team playoff. Where in the Big 12, I'd have to win it. I don't think they're thinking so much about that. I just right. think it's a matter of, it's the same reason that guys flock to the SEC for a decade because that's where the best coaches go. Um, so I think there's there's some tangible things, some intangible things. Unfortunately for Nebraska's sake, I don't think it's a matter of uh, they've won five national championships and that's going to make a big difference on the recruiting trail. I just don't think that matters as much. What's the hard thing, though? Like, What's the thing that he doesn't have to deal with at Iowa State or Kansas or Army or Kentucky that when you get to Nebraska, that's part of the pain of it? Well, it'd, it'd be expectations, but... Um, I think that's I think that's right, but I again Nebraska expectations right now are not, and I know that people right now just want to go to a bowl game. I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't trust Husker fans to just be satisfied with that. I trust them to in two years go back to we want to win big, and you right. better win big. So you know, the first couple of years, oh, it's, let's just go eight and four, and all this stuff is going to be great, but then it'll eventually turn back. But you want a coach who embraces that. Okay, you want that guy to – that's what I want to be, so let's go do it. And if we go down to flames, we'll all go down together. But by God, I want to go for it. And that's the kind of guy you want to hire. Uh, I want to be at Nebraska because that's what I want to do, by God. And so um, – and, you know, and the, the, the power of the, uh, the Big Ten, Sam, it's – I don't understand it. I, I'm a, a Kansas City kid. Uh, hmm. I'm, I'm, all Big Eight, all all Big Big Twelve, eh, but Big Eight definitely. I I, I used to I, I I used to kind of went to the Big Ten like yeah who cares, but if you are one of these coaches who grew up in the the Big Ten footprint, Big Ten is everything, and that's what I've learned about the Big Ten. The people inside the Big Ten think it's the greatest thing ever, and it's it's it, it, it's it's almost religious. They just and, and Big it's, Ten that's is true, and it's Big changing. Ten is God, Big and it's Ten changing. Big Ten. Tom, yeah. it's it's growing more that way, not less. Uh, in part because, you know, they're they're going to L.A. now. I mean, it's it's right. gonna the prestige of the Big Ten is only going to grow over the next five to ten years. Right. Uh, that would concern me if I was in the ACC, Big 12, you know, Pac-12. Right. I'm just um, talking about guys like uh, Matt Campbell and uh, Lance Leipold grew up in the heart of the Big Ten. Yep. And Big Ten is God. And Big Ten is is what was what we are. And so um, that's the attraction. They get to be in Big Ten. You know, and, Sam, you asked, you asked what the downside is from a perception standpoint. Yeah. I think part of it would be – 
continue talking. Doc, Doc Sadler got hired as a special advisor in Oklahoma for Porter I, Mosier. Go ahead. I, I think part of the concern would be he'll be playing he'll, he'll be playing golf at Oak Tree next. That's week. right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Is Go is ahead. is Nebraska? Some of these guys might look at Nebraska as you know in the same in the same way that people looked at Tennessee for the last fifteen years. Right. Like it's just a it's a circus, right? Yeah. There's too many competing interests. Um, you know, it's Auburn. And not that you can't win there, but it damages your quality of life uh, where if you fail, you're going to fail miserably. Uh, you're going to fail embarrassingly. Right. Uh, I think – I don't think Nebraska is quite in the same, you know, category as some of those places, but, but I think that would be part of the fear <coughs> that, that if you're at Iowa State or Army or Kansas, you know, you can have – if you struggle, you can just struggle, right. right? And if a struggle doesn't turn into immediate failure because of a, a widespread panic. That's a good um, point. I, I think often about, is Nebraska at this point, is it, I think it, it has sort of been uh, comparable to Tennessee over the last 20 years, right? My fear is that it becomes like Arkansas, where a once proud powerhouse that, you know, is, We've is, both written about this. Is yeah. barely holding on, yeah. right? Um, the it's no fun being Tennessee where people are laughing laughing at you, but it's worse being Arkansas where nobody even thinks of you. Um, and the two good head coaches they had got in huge personal, you know, whatever you want to call it. But the two good they had two good head coaches, yeah. and both of them were personal disasters. Yeah, both involving like you know relationships and all that. And so outside of that, the Arkansas football has been a real mess. And Arkansas has hired some pretty well-known coaches. I mean, Danny Ford was a failure there. And um, I think the guy they got now is a, probably a good fit, but he's hard. Brett Bielema. How could you have – I mean, boy, oh, boy. I mean, that was a coup. We just got this guy that won three Big Ten titles in a row. Well, he, couldn't, he couldn't get it done. And they, got, and they got Clemson's <clears throat> offensive coordinator right off of national championship. I know. Right? I and mean, he was there for about a half hour. Yeah. But the, this – to me, the SEC is a lot like the Big Ten. It's about the region, the geography. It's, a, it's why so many of these SEC schools want to hire SEC guys, Southern guys. Um, you know, uh, Tennessee trying to hire Shiano. There was a riot. No, we don't want this Yankee. We, want the, we don't want a guy who's not SEC. SEC guys are more comfortable at the end because they understand – the game, it's expectations. You're going to get fired in three years if you don't do all this stuff. They welcome it. It's Southern football. Yep. When the Big Ten is kind of the same way. Although, damn, wanna, damn if Brian Kelly hasn't gone in there and done exactly what everyone was but, afraid he was going to do. It's, but, it's Everybody been, made fun of him for nine months. But it's one what year. Do you, what do you, but what did he go down there and do right away? But, but, he uh, can coach. He, he is a uh, jerk. But, but, let's but, check back, coach. but let's But let's check back next year. They 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 fire today's news. They he's fire a good coach. Year. I know he is, but he's. We'll see how he handles the other side of it. But I I agree. But I'm just saying, in terms of, <clears throat> but in terms of expectations in Nebraska, this will be something to watch. Um, I know Nebraska fans are different. They're on fire all the time. They they're they're always on. They're never off. But when a lot of these games with, with without divisions. And, you, you know, I think gradually when you're playing for seventh place every year or sixth place, do you want to fire the coach or do you accept it? And sort of like, oh, you, you, this is Nebraska fans' worst nightmare. Becoming a Big Ten fan, all I, all I care about is going, you know, seven and five, going to a bowl game. Oh, Wisconsin I'm becoming gave us, Iowa, Wisconsin. Right. Wisconsin gave us their answer, though. But, Wisconsin said no. We don't want that. Right. They don't fire Paul Christ if that's what they want. Right. So I think their athletic director I think that was fired a, Paul Christ I think because was, they're looking ahead and saying, we can't be this in two years. I think that was about keeping Jim Leonard, though, too. Sure. They, they didn't want him going anywhere else. That's fair. Um, but they must think he can do what Paul Chris couldn't do. Well, he better win Saturday. Or they, they, they ain't going to a bowl game. They'll win Saturday. Um. So he, I think he's probably going to be the permanent head coach there. I too. agree, but, but <clears throat> if they lose their last two and they go five and seven, I don't know that he's going to be the coach because they wouldn't have fired Paul Christ and done what they did. I, I think you could if they hire, were comfortable with where they were. I think you could hire him and say, "Well, it's Paul Paul Christ's fault." <laughs> you could, but I'm saying 
Dirk, you, you, you always, you know, you, you, you can speak to the expectations part. I think it'll be interesting to watch when the, when the two divisions come in and all of a sudden you've got USC and UCLA. Um, what are Nebraska fans, what, what, what would it be like in five years? Will they still expect to be playing for the championship or playing for the, be in the top four or five or a few years of being in seventh place, sixth place? You're going to a bowl. You, you, you know, you, you're beating good teams, but you're still kind of in the middle. Eh, what do you think? Yeah, it's a great point about divisions because as stupid and silly and lopsided as they are, at least they give sort of intermediate programs an intermediate goal, right? And what is what is Nebraska and Iowa and Minnesota, for instance, without, without that in, intermediate goal? Um, I don't think Nebraska's expectations right now are are terribly high. I don't think they're going to be high for a while. Yeah. Um, but I also don't want to predict that too much because I think if if you give Husker fans a taste of nine and three for a couple of years, I think their their natural instinct is to say, okay, eleven and one is coming next, right? And I'm not sure that that's the same way at Northwestern or Iowa or Minnesota. I think. I think they took it. I think they take that nine and three back to back years, and they say, "Man, that was a lot of fun." Uh, let's, uh, you know, if we take a step back, that's fine. We just had two great years, and I think the natural instinct at Nebraska after two nine and threes is, "Where's my ne- Where's my next step up?" All right, let's do something rapid fire here before we go on to the game for a second. I'm going to name two coaches. You name who you who you think would be a better fit at Nebraska. Maybe not necessarily who you want, but who who you think would be a better fit. This list is somewhat informed, but also imperfect. Um, I do feel like it's possible Nebraska hadn't made the decision that they were still in that final stage, and it's possible that Nebraska's <coughs> selection might be a little bit different than we thought or or might have been exactly who we thought. Boy, that was that was double talk of all time. But here we go. You ready? Yeah. All right. Matt Campbell and Lance Leipold. Who do you think fits better at Nebraska? Not, how the, what, not what kind of season they're having this year. Who's better? Uh, Lance. Yeah, I think I think Campbell's name is probably a little bit underrated at this point, um, because I again I think Trev's decision might have been made a year ago, mm-hmm. um, or at least who he wanted a year ago. But but I would lean Leipold right now. I think if you can if you can move Kansas back to respectability, uh, that shows that you can coach, and uh, I think his local ties just make him a little bit more natural fit. All right, uh, Luke Fickle and Matt Campbell. Uh, Matt Campbell. Uh, yeah, I, th- I go Campbell. I think uh, again, a little bit of a local stature to that. Um, I'd be surprised if Fickle w- was interested in Nebraska. You have to become the best team in the Big Twelve to make the playoff. That's the bottom line. Maybe they can do it. Maybe they can do it. Um, it's possible. He turned I, down Michigan State. I was going to say, I think down. he could have had a better job a year ago, probably, or at least and, what and he would perceive to be, be a better job. He's got a if, – if he's in the, the, the Ohio State waiting room, he's got a, a pretty good place to wait. He does, yeah. I, I, I've told you guys before that I had a bizarre conversation like two and a half years ago that indicated to me that Ryan Day is not going to leave for like ten years. But I don't, anyway, and that person was actually informed, but whatever. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, okay. Luke Fickle and Mark Stoops. Stoops. Okay. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say Stoops. Because Iowa is just a, a little bit closer to Nebraska. In this, in, At the end of this exercise, are you going to drop on us that Luke Fickle's the head coach and we just, <laughs> that we just didn't know no, it No, I'm just cycling through names. I'm just trying to you – know, I do thought exercises all the time. They piss people <laughs> off. Uh, Mark Stoops and Lance, Lance, Lance Leipold. Lance. Lance. Okay. Matt Campbell and Mark, Mark Stoops. <sighs> Campbell, same guy maybe. I don't know. Um, Campbell. Well, one of them's got Vince Merrow, and one of them doesn't. I mean, but you're talking about the best fit. Yeah, Vince Merrow coached at Nebraska and re- can recruit Ohio. One of them has Vince Merrow, and one doesn't. And Vince Merrow would come to Nebraska. Let's rest assured, he'd love to come back here. Okay, I, I think um, Iowa State has disappointed. There's no doubt about it. They're really hard to watch this year. They don't score points. No, they don't. But it's hard to win at Iowa State, mm-hmm. and Cam- really Campbell's done it better than <clears throat> better than just about anybody there. Nope. Um, and what? so I, I think I think that 
has endurance as a yeah. as an attraction to athletic directors. The one thing I like about Campbell is he, he's got a philosophy. He's got a way that he does it, and he's it's he he, 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 seems, to, he, he seems to be very rigid about that. He doesn't bend, but I like that. You come in here and you you know you know you know what you want to do. You're not you know you're not trying to figure anything out. Mm-hmm. Um, but his teams play hard, and they they hit, they hit the snot out of you. And that the Nebraska needs to get back to that. Nebraska, in a lot of ways, Sam needs to um, reestablish their identity. They have to do a, a reinvent Nebraska football, right? From the just like Bob Devaney six years ago, right? What do you want to be? Let's go do it. <clears throat> you can't. It's been too long. They have not had an identity for the program. I'm not talking about offense. I'm just talking about how you play football yeah. in years. Right. So this guy's got to come in and establish a new identity. For the program, which and, and Sam, yeah. honestly, I cannot imagine in my wildest dreams a successful Iowa State coach not succeeding at Nebraska in okay. any in any sport. I think an Iowa State coach jumping to Nebraska uh, is a guaranteed success story, with the exception of Fred Hoiberg. Okay, you got the joke, finally. I did. That's pretty funny. A couple more. Uh, <laughs> okay. Jeff Munkin and Matt Campbell. Army Ooh. coach. I, I, I would rather have Campbell. I don't know enough about Munkin. Yeah, but I mean, I, he, I, he, he was in the South for a while, Georgia Southern. Yeah, he uh, followed Paul uh, Georgia Johnson. Tech. Yeah, yeah. he from uh, Navy, uh, Army. You know, that part is attractive, the, the discipline. But um, I think Campbell's had – a taste of some expectations and the, the the higher stakes games, right? Um, than Army has. Army doesn't play a lot of high stakes stuff. I think you have to have a little bit of that coming here. Fair please enough. hire a guy who's been a Power Five head coach. Okay. Just please. I don't even care who it is. Just right. hire a guy who's <clears throat> been a Power Five head coach. So so far, the, the the pecking order that that I've been keeping a track in my mind is Lance Leipold and Matt Campbell. Let me add another one in here. And this may surprise you a little bit. Lance Leipold and Kyle Whittingham. That, that's never going to happen. Kyle Whitty, honestly, Kyle Whittingham would probably be my number one pick. Okay. I love Utah. Every time I watch Utah over the last decade, I've thought, damn it, that should be the way Nebraska plays. Uh, sure. And it's, it's the program Nebraska should be but hasn't been. And it's really frustrating to me because 15 years ago, Utah wasn't even a Power 5 school. Um, but man, what he's done there is is really impressive. There's just no way in hell he's leaving for Lincoln, Nebraska. No okay. way. Why? Because he's 61 years old or whatever right. he is, and he's well, he's I, a <clears throat> he's an icon there. He's a native there. He's a BYU grad. Like he's his roots are deep in Utah. He's not leaving. Okay. The only way I would say it is if he doesn't like the way the the, the Pac-12 is headed. And he's going to be in the uh, the Big Twelve, but I think if you're in the Big Twelve, you're still you're you're, you're, you're Utah. You're in the Big Twelve. You're yeah. still going to be okay. If I think, Kyle TV, have, I think the TV networks are going to try to keep the Pac-12 alive. Yeah. If he was on the market, if he was on the yeah. market, he'd be a top ten candidate. True. Sure. Um, probably on the West Coast first. Yeah. Okay. So Lance Leipold is still at the top, but Kyle Whittingham is not a possibility. Kalen DeBoer. And Lance Leipold. You know, if the timing was different, right, mm-hmm. uh, that feels like one that got away for Nebraska. Um, I think he would come. Oh, this sounds insane. South but Dakota I, native, right? Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and and you know, did a nice job at Fresno Kept State. a lot of money to get him out of there. But. So you think he would leave after one year? Boy, that'd be, I, that'd be a really he, compelling choice. He would. Well, I mean, the reality is you have to look at the league you're going to be in and who's leaving that league and how you're going to recruit there. Uh, how are you going to recruit kids in Los Angeles when the two schools in Los Angeles don't play in the Pac-12? I just have a hard Your time. kids aren't going to go home. I have a hard time believing that a brand-new coach is going to lead his team into the top 15 in the country sure. and then decide, uh, I don't know if I can win here long term. Like, it doesn't it kind of... Yeah. Defy logic. It does. It does. Yeah. Well, you know. We'll see. So Lance Heipold is the guy that you think would be the best fit, followed by Matt Campbell. 
out of the list of names I just gave you. You didn't mention Aranda. <sighs> I, I think we all agree that that's yeah. not a practical possibility. It doesn't seem likely because, and and I, I really think it should. I think it should be likely. Like, but apparently it's just not. I don't know why. I don't know. Why like, not? I, I, I everything I haven't heard that much actually, but I, just, but that's the point. Nobody we haven't heard anything. I just don't. I it could be. I don't know why. I think it could be somebody totally out of the blue that we haven't like this uh, DeBoer. I mean, what you have to think. Of, you have to open the door to all possibilities. Right. Thing. Well, I'm just using I, four of those names. I feel really good about, yeah. and then I think Rule is probably in that mix too. I think there's maybe a couple of others. I don't think that Kalen DeBoer is in that list, I mean, but I'm just trying to create like, okay, like when Nebraska gets Lance Leipold, let's say if that's who they get, um, how people feel about that and in comparison to what they might have gotten last year if they had fired Scott Frost or if they had made a very different kind of choice seven or eight years ago when Utah was just joining the Pac-12. So when you go to the, when you go to the grocery store, on an ice cream night, on a 96 degree July night. Yeah, I've okay. done that. And uh, and you're standing there in front of hundreds of options. That's right. <laughs> Literally hundreds of options. Right. Lance Leipold is a really good vanilla bean. Okay. He's not going to. Nothing kn- in it. He's not going to knock your socks off, but man, a really good vanilla bean on okay. a 96 degree July night yeah. tastes pretty damn that, good. It does. Uh, and I think that's how Nebraskans would accept that news. I, I, it's not flashy. Uh, it might not be cookies and cream uh, or mint chip or butterscotch, but but a really good vanilla bean uh, executed properly in the right circumstances can be very effective. That's well See, done. that's the uh, a great analogy because – uh, everybody has their favorite in this thing. The Nebraska fans, but everybody likes vanilla bean, Tom. But that's what I'm saying. If <laughs> uh, people are, somebody's going to bitch and moan about who, the guy they hired because they don't. Well, he didn't do this. He didn't do that. And and so somebody's going to be mad. This will not be a unanimous thing. But the last light pole will be as close to unanimous as you can get because you can't really say anything bad about him. Yeah. And if you've listened to Trev Alberts, he said he was going to go with vanilla bean from, from the beginning. He's. This isn't going to be flashy. It's going to be somebody who's going to build, um, and it's going to be good. He said Vidal Bean from the beginning. So here's the deal, though. There is a lesson in all of these things, okay? And this goes with the exception of maybe, I don't know, Peterson's deal, which was just goofy. But you go down the list. Typically, the athletic director, the president, somebody has a connection to the person that they hire, right? Okay. I know his, I know his agent. I know his old boss. Um, we, my son worked on his staff at Army. Like, right. there's connections. Okay, Trev Alberts has been around long enough. He's built connections with people, and I don't think you can underestimate that when this is over, he might choose somebody totally off the wall, and he'll explain it to you after the fact by saying, "Oh yeah, I go way back with such and such," or, you know. Uh, Frank Solich hired Bo, Bo Pelini as a defensive coordinator because of Monty Kiffin, right? People make networking connections, and those things matter in the end. They're not just looking at a list of resumes. right? And I think we tend to think as we analyze this that it's all about meritocracy and how many games did you win and where did you win it and how many championships, et cetera. I don't think that's how it works. There's a personal element to this that whether you're Trev Alberts or – Tom Osborne or Sean Eichhorst that matters. And and I think if Trev has built a connection or or is has someone in his ear who's telling him that the next great coach is is this guy or that guy, I don't know if it's going to matter what what the public perception is. No, it won't. And it, but I think what's going to matter is that Trev will have had a long conversation with whoever he hires and they do connect. They they feel the same vibe. They, they want the same things. They see things the same way. That's the guy he's going to hire. And uh, that was not Bill Moose and Scott Frost in any way. They didn't know each other. They, they didn't really. It was just a, uh, here's the hot coach. You need to go get him. And that, and that was that what that was all about. Sean Eichhorst and Mike Riley, I don't know if they had a past or not. I don't think they, that there was a really obvious thing there. Uh, Osborne and Bo, not really. Um, you know no, what I mean? I... Um, 
so that they, I mean, that was that was about uh, you know the bow hire was about avenging Frank Solich's firing, right? It, it, so it was, it was about, also about a quick fix, and, yeah. and you know Steve Peterson didn't really know anybody. I mean, he right. Callahan. So this would be, would probably be the first time in a long time that, yeah. if ever, that AD and head coach kind of together. So or at least th- 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 I think on the same plane, the same wavelength. Right. So um, I, I really believe Trev will hire somebody who thinks like he does. I think Nebraska's made, um, you know, the Sean Eichhorst hire of Mike Riley was was a money ball hire. I mean, Sean kind of told me that. He thought that Mike Riley, you know, was overachieving at Oregon State right. and would do the same in Nebraska. The Bo Pelini hire was an emotional um, avenging the firing of Frank Solich. Uh, Steve Peterson was a crap show. And what was the other one? Frost and Moose. I mean, Moose was brought in to hire Scott Frost. But he didn't know him. Front they, of the front of the house restaurant. They weren't the guy. same the, no. the, the same person or the, 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 the same philosophy. I think, as it turns out, you know, Moose is more of a Mike Leach uh, kind of hard-ass guy. And that's not Scott. No. Actually, as it turned out, one of the things that was not true about Scott is that he was like he was like a – that wasn't him. Right. It just wasn't. And so I think – I think that surprised a lot of people. Okay, so let, let's say we don't record a full podcast before Thanksgiving in the Black Friday game. Um, who's your Who's your eyes on favor to be the coach by the time we have another podcast? If we don't record again, Dirk, who's your Who's who, Who's it going to be? Just set me up for failure here, Sam. Who do you think it'll be? Well, let's have another one. Let's have another one next week. Well, um, I plan to, <laughs> but you know, in case we don't, I think it's. Um, I think it's Campbell or Leipold. Okay. And the reason that I think Campbell is still a possibility, again, is because I think Trev's been thinking about this for a long, long time. Right. And I don't think a couple losses in October, excessive losses in October or November, probably carry that much weight in his mind when he's been thinking about it as long as he has. Right. Leipold would be my choice. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with. I don't. I, I think it's it's one of those two. Let me ask you this real quick: How much does retaining Mickey Joseph mean to Trev? Because Matt Campbell won't do it. I don't think. Uh, I think Lance could. How important is that? I'm not sure it's that important. I don't know though. I don't. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, well, Matt Campbell has Nate Shieldhaus. Yeah. And that's Nate's role has been to do what Mickey does, and he does it in Kansas City. Right. <clears throat> um, but that doesn't mean that Mickey Joseph can't fit on a staff. I, yeah, I don't know. Here's the here's the thing about Mickey. He he's got a pretty good track record uh, of bringing guys in, but what he's doing now, I think, makes him even more interesting in the transfer portal than he's been to this point. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he might be even a better recruiter this winter than he was last winter. Right. Um, And I'm not saying that lands him the head coaching job, but I do think it gives him, if he can go to Trev Alberts and say, Trev, I think this guy's coming. I think this guy's coming. I think this guy's coming. If you keep me around or if you give me the head coaching job. That's a pretty – if you can put actual names in front of your boss and say, we can get this guy. Right. He's a freshman at Miami or Arizona State or whatever. I can get him. That's different than just an abstract, uh, I'll go after all the five stars, you know, sales <coughs> right. pitch. Yeah. And I think Mickey is exper- – he has got enough experience and track record and connections to know that there are actual guys on the board out there that he thinks he can get. Um and so from that standpoint, I think there's probably an even greater a motivation to keep him around. Fair enough. I'm a little disappointed that none of the freshman receivers at Nebraska this year really did much. I mean, it's, it's disappointing. Like, you would have hoped that Janiron Bonner could have gotten on the field. Man, Nebraska is not – they have not gotten lucky with injuries and things like that. I mean, Thomas Fedoni has not taken, not caught a pass in his career and all this other stuff. It's Chris Septak, point, 2.0. Yeah, that's too bad. Okay, so it's my turn, I think, to, to speculate. If Nebraska hires a coach by next weekend, I pretty much agree with you guys. If for some reason it carries out another week, then I think it could be Luke Fickle, who would be coaching in an AAC championship game, or the Utah coach. We'll see. You think Kyle Whittingham is a possibility? I don't know. I just don't know. 
I don't know what Nebraska's willing I, to do. If they're willing to pay a lot, a lot of money, uh, they may be. You never know. He, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know that <clears throat> Nebraska has. My sense of it is, no, I don't think that person is in there. But we have to remember that what USA, USC was able to do is wait until the thing was over, and then they just went in and made an offer. And you just don't know sometimes what a person's going to say. And I'm not saying that he's in there. But if they don't announce a coach by Saturday of next week or Sunday of next week, then you already know that they're not they're going after someone else who's in a, t- in a championship game. Well, and I want to make a one final point to – to support, be, supporting what you just said, which is you don't know. Just we, we have a tendency to think that, oh, that guy's got a top 25 team. Why would he go somewhere else? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it doesn't even have to be about the money. Sometimes it's about, hey, man, my wife's not happy here. Or my boss and I got crossways. Or, um, you know, in Lincoln Riley's case, who knows why Lincoln Riley did it? I, I still don't know if we know. Um, didn't want to go to the SEC, wanted to be in L.A., whatever. But, like, there are all sorts of reasons that people move. You see it in your own neighborhood. You see it in your own office complex. Like, people move. They, they're they they're not stationary. Uh, and, and who's to say that, it, that great college football coaches can't be the same? I mean, when, when you – just because somebody's got the number eight team in the country or number 10 uh, at, at Utah doesn't mean that they don't – Want to look around a little bit? I see. I look at Brian Kelly. Could, could have been another perfect name example. Forever. And he said, "I, I got to, I got to, I got to take my shot." Uh, you know, at, at, at the national championship, and it doesn't mean Utah can't win national championship. But maybe he's he's been there for he's from there. He said, "I need to just try something, something before I retire. I need to just take a shot somewhere." I mean, that could happen. Well, let me know. throw I just and this is stupid. This I would not predict this in a thousand years. But why wouldn't Trev Alberts give Zach Taylor a call and say, "Zach, w- would you want it?" Yeah, he I mean, you'd have to wait a long time. I know that he would say no. I know it's not going to happen. Like Zach Taylor thinks he's going to win a Super Bowl away from his job in the middle of it. Of yes, course. Yeah. But well, my point is like you just don't know who's going to be interested in something like this uh, right. until you make the phone calls. Right. And the uh, beauty of having 75 days is you have time to make those phone calls. Right. And that's I bet true. he has. And he, you just ask Zach, who do you like? I think that's probably what he did. And, uh, you know, I don't know. And, it's, but, you know and I don't know that Zach Taylor is the answer <clears throat> either. Like, yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I it, wouldn't, <clears throat> I don't think the Los Angeles Rams coach, who I think is a better coach than Zach and is also Zach's member, mentor, is the answer at Nebraska either Sean McVay? Like I wouldn't hire Sean McVay to run Nebraska. But I mean, uh, maybe Zach. Maybe I don't know. But like, there's certain things that go along with that system that's just like Bill Callahan. And you can't. I don't think Zach's going to be able to come here and just be like, all right, we're going to run this primordial offense. Like it, there'd be challenges to that. And I think people are a little fatigued by the former Husker thing, yeah. unless it's Mickey, because Mickey's selling, you know, five stars. People are, and that's not what's going to get Nebraska all the way back. It's not. But all right, we've got we've got a grab bag here of things we could talk about: men's basketball, women's basketball, volleyball. Which one do you want to go? With? Um, are we locked into Huskers? Because that women's basketball game the other night was well, Nebraska was, played was, in it was something. Uh, man, that was <laughs> I I. Uh, it was fun seeing those two programs at their peak. You know, face off. Yeah, uh, well, one of them. And is it was at their a, peak. it was especially fun to see. <laughs> Creighton pick up right where they left off mm-hmm. last March yeah. because holy cow that was that was maybe even better than the team that beat Iowa um, it was so I don't want to diminish Nebraska because Nebraska is is going to be really good too but but I think that 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 was the that was the event of the week in my opinion it was yeah and what I'll say for for what Creighton is doing is I think that they have a very very tough team that is very physical. And actually, pretty athletic, um, even though they're all Midwestern kids. Um, I do think Nebraska. <laughs> there's a little concern there, like, and, and and I I have a pretty good sense of that program, pretty good sense of Amy, at this point, and I think they probably came out of that game going, yeah, we we've got some problems. Um, so we'll see if those get corrected. Like I, there were things happening in that game that I that were concerning. If you're a Nebraska fan. Um, the other thing that I would say, and, and, and this is somewhat true in men's <clears throat> basketball too, is the best player on the floor 
has to make a decision early in a game to take the game by the gills. And by that, I mean, you know, the way that you would take a fish, you know, especially a catfish, or you know, or, well, I don't know, maybe you wouldn't with a catfish, but you take the game by the gills means you take it control of it and you control the game. And Nebraska's got probably the best player on the floor almost every time they play, and she's got to take control of the game. Like, you can't, you cannot drift and get everyone else involved and all that other stuff. Sometimes you have to take control right away. And Jazz Shelley needs to do that. Like you can't, you can't wait until the third quarter to start looking for your shot. And it's really funny you say that because I, I am a subpar seventh grade basketball coach. Mm-hmm. Okay, well it's a little different. But. No, I know, but but what I, what has become so apparent to me, even at that level, is the first five to ten minutes of a game are so critical mm-hmm. because you two teams face off and you sort of feel each other out. And you recognize, you know, which one's better, right? And Nebraska let Creighton dictate that the other night, and right. it, and by the t- by the time Nebraska sort of collected itself, it was too late. Right. Like they, you can't let a team push you back. Right. Uh, and Nebraska did, and I give Creighton a lot of credit for that. But uh, I worry that the same thing will happen at St. John's tonight. Is it's like I just don't know if Nebraska is. You know, St. John's is not Villanova, but I don't know if Nebraska is ready to stand there and say, you're not going to push us around right, right now. And some of the, okay, so the NBA, and you watch more NBA than I do, but I watch my share. The reality is in the NBA, every everybody on the floor looks at each other in the first quarter and says, we're just going to kind of play cool for a quarter. Yep. We're going to have fun. We're going to make some shots. Everybody's going to warm up. And then we'll see where we're at at the, you know, sometimes it's like a 12-point lead at the end of the first quarter because one team couldn't make a shot. But until it gets to the playoffs, everybody's just having fun. The challenge in college basketball is that doesn't happen. Like, you you, you have to flip a switch really early and really quickly. In the you NBA, to, everybody can You have to look impose other, your will. You oh, have yeah. to, to, you know, <clears throat> announce your presence. And uh, especially early in a season mm-hmm. when there's so much mystery about who's good and who's not good. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I thought that was a lesson from the other night's game. And again, I think it'll be really interesting how that same principle applies to Nebraska in the next se- the Nebraska men over the next seven days, uh, and also the Creighton men as they go out to Hawaii and sort of try to try to uh, you know announce that they're the top dog in a really really loaded field in Hawaii. I mean, there's just this early in the season mentality in the first five to ten minutes of a game carries a lot of weight. And Sam Griesel, for example, was a closer in the first two games that they played, and he did a really nice job in the in the, in the the second half and the under ten and whatever. But Sam probably has to come out tonight, and we're recording this before the game, and he needs to be assertive early because otherwise Andre Corbello and what St. John's brings to the table. Everybody knows Mike Anderson. You covered a million <clears throat> Mike Anderson games over the years when he was at Missouri and all that. Um, when they were playing Nebraska, you cannot you cannot wilt early against the Mike Anderson team, or otherwise they will they'll overwhelm you. So I don't know. I I'll be curious to see who's assertive for Nebraska this evening and who isn't. And that's a good point. And Thanksgiving they're going to play Oklahoma, Seton Hall or Memphis, and a third team to be named. And the reality is Nebraska can win a couple of those. The Oklahoma's not very good. I mean Oklahoma lost to who? Radford, Sam Houston State. I can't remember. Um, but OU's, you know, rebuilding. Of course, they just hired Doc Sadler, so Doc Sadler will be able to tell them everything possible about Fred Hoiberg, which is kind of funny. He'll be on the other side. You just imagine Fred. Yeah, Doc's on the other side now. What are you going to do? I let him go. What do you want me to do? I want right. to be like Doc Sadler, where I just, like, keep working, just keep bringing in checks. Um, nothing against Doc, but that's a pretty good life if you can get it. It's terrific. Free golf. Yeah. <clears throat> Is it going to be warm enough in Oklahoma next week to go? You wonder. Oh, absolutely. Um. <clears throat> Sam, I got a question for you. Okay. This will be how we end it. Um, your final four, uh, your final four playoff picks at this point are. Oh, that's pretty easy. Uh, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and uh, Tennessee. You think both Michigan and Ohio State get in? Yeah, no way. I do. I, I don't. I, the committee will will penalize Michigan for their uh, non conference schedule. Okay. Well, I think Michigan's going to beat Ohio State. Me too. Um, <laughs> so, well then, yeah. USC's going to lose for sure. 
Uh, TCU is going to lose. I don't want them to lose. I, want I don't TCU want them to make lose it. either. I really but do. I think, I think they're going to lose. Um, I want Max Duggan to make it. They're That'd either going to so lose cool this week at Baylor or they're going to lose to Kansas State in the uh, yeah. title game. I, I so want t- TCU to make it. That'd be so much I fun. I really think the most interesting scenario on the board, I think Tennessee's in. Um, they're going to ride Georgia's coattails. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to ride the coattails of that Alabama win, which yeah. might not end up being all that impressive when it's said and done. But they beat LSU. That's what's that's what's huge. They did. They add LSU. That's a big deal. Um, and the Pitt win, I think, will yeah. will age well. And Tennessee belongs in the. They belong in the playoff. But a a Big Twelve champion TCU. Um, let's say they lose to Baylor and then win the Big Twelve. I think I would put them in over the second place Big Ten team. Fair enough. And I don't think – I think that would be a very interesting debate. If they do that, that's great with me. Like, I think the challenge is right now TCU is four, and I don't know how. They, they don't belong over Tennessee. Um, you could argue that, 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 that oh, Tennessee, Tennessee, with Tennessee you on belongs that. A, in, front of, in front of Michigan if you want to. You could. But yeah. Tennessee's had too many good wins. Too many good wins. And, like, legitimate wins. Like, you don't go beat well, LSU at LSU. No, very few teams do that. And you know what? TCU wouldn't have done it. And they wouldn't have beaten Alabama. And, like, all those things are true. I think so. there's some years where the Big Ten justifiably deserve two teams. Yeah. I don't, this, think, I don't think this is this that This is not year. one of them. We'll see. Well, I mean, <clears throat> if Michigan beats Ohio State, Michigan's obviously in. We'll, we'll just see. We'll see how that game plays out. Ohio State won't be in then. Um, yeah. We'll see how it plays out. I think it's going to be Georgia, Ohio State, Tennessee, and LSU. Okay. And they're they're going to win the SEC. And they're, they're going to they're gonna drive everybody out of their minds <laughs> with three SEC teams in there. But, that, but by God, okay. if TCU doesn't win out, and, and all they do is win, but I, we'll see. I think yeah. they're, again... My my TCU pick is predicated on T, um, the four that I picked is predicated on TCU losing. Of course, if they win out, they're going to be in. Yeah, um, but I don't think they're going to win out. And so there you have it. And USC is not. I agree with you. USC's not I agree there. with you. Tennessee belongs over the loser of Michigan Ohio State. Um, I think that's a priority. I just man, if they go all SEC Big Ten this year, that w- <laughs> that would be It'd be sour. That would be sour. I agree, would. but I mean, it could very easily happen. Yeah, I mean, LSU, uh, I, I can beat Georgia. I think. Yes, I think they can too. Like, yeah, the, your scenario is very possible. And Georgia would still be in. Yeah, they would. Uh, yeah, you know, now if um, Michigan had played better teams, man, early, we can't, I just can't wait for the twelve team now. And I've always been skeptical of it, but they don't have any. They don't have any framework on how to decide for it. It's got to go to twelve. It has to. Because it's, it's 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 actually depressing. The only thing more depressing is the Heisman race, which nobody talks about. And all of a sudden, this kid from North Carolina who's been playing, his own team has a horrible defense, so bad that he gets like 17 possessions a game, and all the defenses they're playing are horrible. And he's gonna get, he might get an Andre Ware Heisman Trophy, I think a no. Ty Detmer Heisman Trophy. You know, I I, hate, I love the Heisman, but, but in general. The Heisman has oh, it's, it's, it's has, lost. Has really dropped. Oh yeah, recently. it's not well because you don't you won't give it to running backs because because you know you don't have running backs. They give it to the four thousand yard passer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to me, any... it went downhill when Oklahoma won it back to back years, and Oklahoma didn't play any defense. Yeah. And you're rewarding Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield, and they're great players, especially Kyler Baker is whatever, but. You're rewarding those two players for playing on teams that gave them the opportunity to have 17 or 18 possessions a game. You're just racking you, up yards. But you, you don't have the great running backs like you used to because teams don't run the ball. Everybody's throwing it. Everybody's doing. Uh, 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 I'll play follow the leader, and right now that's the, fair. You know, so. But I would say, like, I think Jonathan Taylor was was a great player. Absolutely, and he's a great player in the NFL. Yeah. So like I don't know the Heisman for me is just kind of gone. If Drake May wins that award, I you know what are you gonna do? Like he just that wouldn't it wouldn't be remotely it would be it'd be like a Ty Detmer, Andre Ware. Who else? Who else is the least deserving Heisman winner when you think about Jason it? Jason White. Jason White. Sorry, Z, Oklahoma fan. 
Jason White is the least deserving Heisman winner. Yep. But at least he played on a team that was, like, really good. But he was probably their seventh best player. Yeah, but, like, you know, I get it. But, like, at least it was, like, you know, those teams, that team that Baker Mayfield played on, they gave up, like, 59 points. <laughs> they weren't any, like, their defense was horrible. Yeah, that's fair. Jason White's the least deserving. Okay. Most people would say Andre Ware was, or Ty Detmer, but fair. <clears throat> Tim Brown, he was a great pro. That helped. He was, no, he, he was good in college. He was. He was very good. He yeah. was very good, yeah. He was very good. That's but, true. you know, he played for Notre Dame. That helped a, a lot, too. I guess um, Paul Horning is the one the that best, everybody mentions. Yeah. My favorite was a guy who came out of nowhere and absolutely deserved it. Uh, 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 88 Barry Sanders. Oh, yeah. That obviously deserved But, I mean, it was a guy who, who didn't play for a great team. He played for – I mean, they, uh, they were good. They're not great. Yeah. But he he deserved it, and yeah. he got it. Greatest player in college football history. No hype at all. Just Did it one year. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's ever been better. Yeah. It's ever since, before or since. Like, my favorite player, my favorite non-Nebraska player of all time in college football is Barry Sanders. I've watched his Oklahoma State highlights, just an hour of them. All right. That is our uh, podcast for this week. We're going to try to get back here before Thanksgiving uh, and talk about the Black Friday game and the impending hire of a Nebraska basketball uh, football coach. Basketball. Freudian night. slip. Yeah, that'll be next year. Freudian Sorry. slip. <laughs> okay. Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later.